Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's do a quick review of what we call the electric flux and how it relates to the Gaussian surface and Gauss's law. Well, let's say we have some charge right here. Uh, let's call it Q. And um, we have electric field emanating away from the charge. And let's say we draw a Gaussian surface at a distance r away from the center of that charge. And so we could find electric field strength on the side on the edge of that Gaussian surface by using our Gauss's law, E dot dA equals Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. But it turns out that the electric flux emanating away from a charge is going to be equal to the integral of E dot dA, which in other words, if that's true, if this is one and the same, that means we can also write the electric flux as being equal to the charge inside the surface divided by epsilon sub naught. We're used to seeing the electric flux like this, where it's simply equal to the electric field strength times the area, which again, you take the electric field strength along this uh, edge of the Gaussian surface, and you multiply times the area of the Gaussian surface, that is also a way in which we can calculate the electric flux. But since the two are the same, you say they can also write it as Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Another thing that we should do is probably clarify what we mean by E dot dA. Because if we have a small little area element, we call that dA. And then we have the normal vector, the unit vector that's perpendicular to the surface, which we call the n unit vector. And then we have the electric field emanating perpendicular to the surface. So the area element dA as a vector quantity is equal to the magnitude of that area, dA, times the direction of the little unit vector perpendicular to the surface. This is one and the same. So if you write E dot dA, that is the same as E dot the size of dA times the direction of the unit vector, vector. Now since we're having a dot product between this and this, and since they're pointing in the same direction, the angle between them is zero, and so we multiply the magnitude of E times the magnitude of dA times the cosine of the angle between them, which is zero degrees, and the cosine of zero is one, this simply becomes E dot dA. We integrate it, we get E times A. So this is where this comes from. That's why we can write this equal to this. It's one and the same because the way the Gaussian surface is always going to be perpendicular to the electric field. That's why that's important. And so now you can see the relationship between electric flux and Gauss's law. It's simply Q inside divided epsilon sub naught, or sometimes we simply are given the strength of the electric field and the, surf and the size of the area through which the flux goes and we have to simply multiply the two to get the electric flux. And hopefully that clarifies it a bit. And that is how it's done.